We thank God for this year and all the things that have been spoken concerning the year. Everyone, Happy New Year again. For those of us who are coming to a meeting for the first time this year, we wish you Happy New Year. We wish you welcome to this great year 2020, the year of establishment of manifestation of our God, the year of glorification of the people of God. Hallelujah. There shall be glorification this year according to God's promise. He's going to glorify us. He's going to glorify many. You know, the, the, the glory is in levels. Praise the Lord. Glory, there are levels of glory. And uh, we get glorified from level to level as we change from image to image. Praise the Lord. Image is responsible for glory. The Bible says in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, say, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. Image are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory. So for glory to come this year, change must come. Hallelujah. There must be change of image. Same image. We must change from image, one level of image to another level of image by the, glory, by, this, by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we change, we acquire the glory that is commensurate to the image we have acquired. Because of that, I'm sure everyone should be interested in raising to image. Isn't it? If image, if the level of image you have attracts a level of glory, I'm sure you want to change your glory from time to time. Do you want to remain with the same glory throughout the same throughout this year? We, you must change. You must change. You must change image, change glory. Praise the Lord. Before the end of the year, the glory that you have now would have changed several times because you would have changed several times during the year. Hallelujah. So in glory will increase according to change. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God has promised us that there will be glorification at different levels because everybody, we are all at different levels of growth, different levels of change, different levels of nature. Nature acquisition. Hallelujah. So we will change. We will change. We will change. That's the most important thing for a man to do. A man is meant to evolve. A man is meant to grow. A man is meant to acquire stature. God is particular about man acquiring stature. When they describe men in the Bible, they don't describe them men that have made meaning, means made sense in the Bible. Men that they reckon with in the spirit. They don't describe them according to their external. They describe them according to their inward growth, inward achievement, inward uh, 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 build. Hallelujah. That's the way they describe men. Jesus Christ. Let's quickly look at Jesus Christ talking about John the Baptist. It's a very interesting, interesting thing. That's, that should be uh, Matthew, is he 11? Say so who? Do, no, I think it's about eight or nine. Who do you go to? Who do men? Who do you go to seek in the wilderness? Let's look at it. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Hallelujah. Very interesting. Okay, level seven. Okay, as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes. Concerning John, 
What went ye out into the wilderness to see? What? What did you go out to see in the wilderness? <laughs> A reed shaking with the wind? Certainly not. You know, there are some men that I read shaking by the wind. A reed. What is a reed? Grass. That the wind can blow easily. You know, wind cannot blow trees. But wind can blow grass. He said, is it, what did you go to see in the wilderness? Is it a reed? Is it grass? Hallelujah. <laughs> is it grass? Shaking by the wind? What did Jesus say? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Are you seeing? That's another description of man. That's how some men want to be described. By their, by their dressing. So that guy is a powerful dresser. And that's their identity. That's all they want to <laughs> be known by. Power dresser. Car. Say, Tebari Itele, Itele. You know what they call Itele? You know Itele? You know some men are described like that. Some men are known like that. That's their identity. When you want to describe him, say, who is he? Itele, Ole. And people strive to be described by their external. I once heard the story of somebody who got a very nice pair of shoes. And those shoes were really, you know, really, really tough. So you understand. And he wanted everybody to know the kind of shoes he had on. Because that is his identity. That is all that he's made up of. What he's wearing. So somebody came and said, please, I'm looking for so, so, so place. Can you describe it for me? And he said, eh, you are looking for, he said, go right, turn like, he was using his shoes, turn like this, then you go straight. <laughs> so that in case you didn't look down well, to see, he has to use it to describe so you can see very well, because it's all about his outside. But you see, God does not want to, he doesn't want to identify us with the kind of shoes you are wearing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he's asking them, who do you go to see in the wilderness? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's palaces king's houses. I think another translation talks about purple. So they that wear purple and live delicately. Live delicately. So a man is not described by the quality of life that he's living. You are not in heaven, you are not identified by such things. The right fork on the table, the right spoon for soup, the right, you know, there are different types of spoons. If you go for a dinner in a, a delicate place and you grab the wrong spoon, there's spoon for soup, there's spoon for rice, there's spoon for, for tea. Some people can use the spoon for tea and begin to take soup <laughs> because you are not used to delicate living. Everything is arranged. Hallelujah. And some people spend their whole life striving and laboring for delicate living. Am I saying delicate living is a sin? No. But whether you live delicately or you live <laughs> simply, So when 
a, a life is like that, it's arranged like that. You cannot accommodate other people. Because other people will mess up your delicate living for you. You must be in a world of your own. So, such people, Jesus said they have, I'm not saying it is wrong to live delicately. God can provide delicate living for you. But in that delicate living, he will give you instructions that will make you able to inherit eternal life. Because your heart must be large. In spite of your delicate living. Your delicate living must not be a God unto you. That they, should, they will not touch. Your, your place must not be broken. Your fork must not fall down. Your... So you understand? It is not a life that can earn you eternal life. So you have to handle it with levity. Not with coco. You know coco. You'll be so, so tensed. You have not used the right fork to eat. So not, there is delicate living is not a sin. But it must not be idolized. Because there is virtually nothing in it. Absolutely nothing. Is a state in the natural. Is not a state in the spirit. Did you hear what I said? Is a state in the natural. Is not recognized in the spirit. There is no place for it in the spirit at all. No mark for it. No reward for it. No recognition. Spirits don't know it. With your delicate living, evil spirits can see feast on you. So it's not an advantage in the spirit. It's not an advantage in the realm of the spirit. And you that you are living delicately, you have to be careful. So you don't fall, you don't, you don't, you don't become disadvantaged in the realm of the spirit because of it. I told us, it is neither circumcision nor circumcision. It is not simple living, it is not delicate living. You must be able to appropriate the two. If God moves you to the level of delicate living, a, a, some laws must accompany you there. The law of the brotherhood. <laughs> eh? The law of the, that one, do, you will fail there if you are not holding that law tight. To consider the brother better than your delicate life. The brother is a far, far better. Far, far better. Quality. You can't compare. You can't compare the brother to your things. Laye. Laye. You will be disqualified. Because you are not discerning Christ. That is Christ. That brother, that sister is Christ. Better discern them. Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. So that's not where we are going today. But it's part of it. Aha. Uh -huh. This is another translation. But what went ye for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they which... Uh, where did you go now? The, behold, they which are gorgeously appareled and live delicately are in king's courts. Next verse. But went, what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, more than a prophet. More than a prophet. You know, in the Old Testament, prophets are the products of the law. Prophets 
are the, they, are, they call prophets sons, sons of men. Son of man, prophesy. Prophets are sons. And you know, sons are raised. Praise the Lord. Sons, son, son of men then, in the Old Testament, they are raised by the law. The law raised them. The law matured them. So they become sons. One of the shortcomings, major shortcoming of the law of Moses is that he could only raise sons of men. He could not raise a son of God. In the sense or in the order of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he could raise prophets in the Old Testament. But Jesus Christ is saying that John the Baptist is more than a prophet. More than a son of man. That the prophet, that the, the law raised, the law matured them. Hallelujah. Prophets are products of the law and the spirit of the law. Because that law is not just, it has spirit. So you see that the spirit raised prophets. Spirit comes on them and begins to tutor them differently from ordinary men. So ordinary men are referred to as children. But prophets are referred to as sons. Because they have been raised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus was describing John the Baptist. said, Yea, I say unto you, much more than a prophet. Is much more than a prophet. Much more than a prophet. So how did he now describe this? He went to further qualify him of all men born. Maybe it's from that, that one should be in a Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew. Yeah. For this I say unto you, among those that are born of women, among those that are born of women, what does that bring to your mind? Moses was born of woman. Elijah that went to heaven in chariots was born of a woman. Eh? Enoch who walked with God and was no more was born of a woman. I don't want to imagine something so. I don't want to start imagining something so. Because it appears our father Abraham was born of a woman. Pastor. Eh? Abraham fell, fell from the sky. Is he a man born of a woman? Uh -uh. Are we saying that John the Baptist according to Jesus, is greater than Abraham. According to, it's not me that said it to. Because John the Baptist is a, is a son of Abraham. Huh? He's Abraham's son. He said, but of all men born of women, ah, it's only Adam that was not born of a woman. Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Give me Matthew. Matthew is the one I want. Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen. That's what I want. There hath not what? Risen. Did you see that? There hath not what? Risen. They had not what? <laughs> A greater than John the Baptist. They had not risen. Are you seeing that? 
So it is possible for a man to rise. That's what I'm saying. Reason. That is to emerge. To evolve. There is not a man evolved like John the Baptist. There is not a man evolved. So it is possible for a man to evolve. What, what is responsible for greatness? What they use to is it, is it calculate or to measure greatness is arising. Not delicate living. <laughs> How much have you evolved? Because according to worldly standard, John the Baptist was wearing what? Camel's skin. And he was living, eating, low cost and wild. Hot. That's not delicate living at all. And he was living in the desert. That is no definition of greatness at all. To the natural man, that's a wild man. Kilon shelei konileni. Eh? No house, no good clothing, and no good diet. He's not eating a three cost meal. He's eating low cost and wild honey. Hey, 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 oh, God have mercy. You. But Jesus Christ said, No man born of a woman has arisen. Like John the Baptist. Kings. Prophets. Great men. That have walked with God. In the Old Testament. Said no one. Has arisen. Like John the Baptist. So greatness. Is not measured. By the external. Greatness is measured. By the rising of stature of a man or in a man. So when, when they were describing Moses in the wilderness. I mean, I said Moses. Yes, Moses. Say so Moses was the meekest man. On earth. You know God is telling us. God is coming through to us. He's breaking through to us. He's telling us that he wants to. Glorify us this year. He wants to bring. So many things to us. So that he can come. Into our midst. He can manifest himself to us. And the only thing that can guarantee that is that men rise in stature. Now, the stature we are talking about now is the stature of a person. It says, those whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. And those whom he predestinated to be, he called. Those whom he called, he justified. That is the reason for faith. Because the, without faith, there is no justification. Being justified by faith. So when you are called, they put you through the process of faith. Living by faith. Justification there is the same thing as purification. Purification. 
he will take you through a process of purification or making holy. Making holy by faith. By faith that is in Christ Jesus. The faith makes you to arise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Living by the faith that is in Christ Jesus gives you a, a measure of stature. No one can arise on his own. Jesus said, by taking thought, can you add a cubit to your stature? Nobody can think himself to growth. Something must be given to you. Stature is given. Stature is given. There must be given. There must be a giving. And many, many givings for stature to be raised. Hallelujah. For stature to be raised. Now, Jesus, the stature of the person that is acceptable, the acceptable stature that is, that is acceptable to God is the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Stature of Christ first, then stature of the Son of God, which is divine nature, divine stature. Divine stature. It can only be given. Paul said, Paul planted. Apollos watered. God giveth the increase. Are you seeing? <laughs> increase is God's work. God is the one that gives increase. He said, can you by taking thought add a cubit to your stature? So it is God's duty to give stature. Hallelujah. To cause growth to occur. What man can do is to plant. And then he can water. But for God, for, for things to grow and change state, it is of God. So you see the activity of the Spirit of God on our Lord. John was testifying about about Jesus. What made the two of them different? Hallelujah. <laughs> different things were given to them. And that was what was responsible for the different kinds of stature and different levels of greatness that they had. John was greater among all men born of women. But Jesus said, the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. The least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Now, people said it is because John the Baptist is not born again. And the least in the kingdom is born again. You know that our ranking in the realm of the spirit is not according to the new birth. How many of us know that? Ranking in the realm of the spirit is not according to the new birth. At new birth, everybody is equal. At new birth, everybody's spirit is Christ. We are all at the same level at new birth. Born again, the same born again. Now, what makes the difference is that some people begin to rise faster than others. Some people begin to emerge that emergence is soul translation, soul alteration, soul change. It is quality of soul that makes the difference amidst people who are born again. 
soul quality, soul change, soul maturity. How much a soul will respond to God determines his level of greatness. So it is not, when the Bible is talking about the greatness of John the Baptist, it's not talking about whether he's born again or he's not born again. He's talking about his soul maturity. How raised that soul has become. How raised his soul is. A lot of born again people today, a lot of ministers in the fivefold ministry don't have the maturity of John the Baptist. True or false? The soul state of John the Baptist. Eh? Pastor, I You see, the leading that came upon John the Baptist is a very high one. That thing he was doing in the wilderness is not because he loved to do it. That was just the, the arrangement that the Spirit of God gave to him. And he, he keyed into it. Take him from among men. Take him from the place of comfort. We, we are we, we in the city. We are always looking for comfort. Eh? Comfort and more comfort. And more comfort. There's nothing wrong with looking for comfort too. So you understand what I'm saying? But when something, when a lifestyle is crafted for you, because the Spirit of God can craft a lifestyle for you. I, I know a, a man of God that is very close to us. All his friends, they have built their houses and moved into it. He too has built his own. <laughs> and we're expecting him to move into it to celebrate his 50th birthday. So we say, What happened to your house? He has asked for how long did I know that that house has been built? Say, What happened now? Why have you not moved? He said, ah, That the Spirit of God, oh, Bani, kill your day in your day, call it on to Jacob one way. Now, when we were so sure that at least this 50th birthday. He will move in there and use it to celebrate. So we got there and said, hey, what? Kilo Shere, what happened to that house? And they are so big. I think about how many sitting rooms. You know, very different compartments, different, very big place. Comfortable. I said, Kilo Day, you didn't move in. Ni. We thought we were coming to celebrate there. He said, ha, what about How can somebody build a house and they will not allow you to move into it? <laughs> May God help us Amen. to submit to his dealings and arrangements for us that will make us to arise. It is in that process of being, being how will I call it, led, controlled, by the spirit, restricted, limited by the spirit that a man arises. Because you will not know and understand God's ways if he doesn't lead you. If he leaves you to do everything the way you want, the way you like, at the time you want it, you, win, you won't understand. You won't be able to receive things that make for rising. Hallelujah. So we're talking about a man rising. And we know that nobody can rise on his own. Nobody, your fasting cannot make you rise. <laughs> Something must be given to you to make you to rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus was comparing John the Baptist with other men. And we have heard that 
you know, the least in the kingdom is born again. John the Baptist is not born again. A lot of people are born again. They don't have the quality of soul that John the Baptist has. One thing that fascinates me about John the Baptist, <laughs> you know that he has stature truly. The way he handled what God committed into his hands, so much that he did it so perfectly and, F and uh, flawlessly. You know that he's a man of stature that can do that. A man of stature that can do that. You see, the stature we are talking about, it, it, yesterday, when Lecky and uh, Pastor Thompson was ministering, as he was ministering, he was talking about status. Status, and he, he, he said some things that amounted to status in the spirit. He was talking about Moses being the meekest man on earth. And that was a status in the spirit. As he was talking about it, I just felt like, how will I explain it? Like a valley in my soul that needed to be filled. A valley of meekness that needs to be filled. There's still a lot of wanting for meekness. There has not been enough arising. <laughs> Did you get what I'm saying? You know, when I get such things, I know God is saying something. There has not been enough, there still need to be enough deposit of substances that will cause meekness stature to arise in that soul. Because the person, we are, the person we are talking about, when he was going to describe himself, he said, learn of me. For I am meek and I am low. That is my, my reason. I am meekness personified. When you cut the fabrics of his, of his make, it will be speaking meekness, meekness, meekness. His, his nails is meekness. His fingers is made up of meekness. He, everything about him is meekness. And that is what makes him acceptable to be able to sit on the throne. Now, they said, Moses was the meekest man on earth. He attained the highest level of meekness earth can give. Now, that does not qualify Moses to sit on the throne. Now, as, as meek as Moses was, John the Baptist was greater than him. And if greatness is calibrated according to the level of meekness, then John the Baptist must have a higher meekness. More meekness than Moses. Because there is no greatness outside meekness in the realm of the spirit. Now let's see the demonstration of the meekness of John the Baptist. He's not like an ordinary man. <laughs> He's a man that has risen. Let's see the way he introduced Jesus. The way, the way he handled his work shows a high level of development. What is the number one thing? He was separated from that thing he was handling. Completely separated from it. So he was able to do it perfectly. Aha. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, You see, God cannot risk this kind of ministry somebody, to somebody who has not been raised. He would He would not be able to separate himself because John was already gathering crowd before Jesus came. His fame had gone round. 
so much that the Pharisees were going to the wilderness to God. They were going to Jordan to go and be baptized by John. Ah, he was the happening guy. The reigning man of God, different from the Pharisees and the scribes. But he knew his job description. <laughs> he knew his job description. You know himself and Jesus are cousins. You think they never crossed their, their, themselves when they were growing up? I don't know. <laughs> but he did not he did not know Jesus after the flesh. He discerned him. He didn't say, ah, Joshua, he worry. When Jesus came, he said, ah, Joshua, or oh, Mary. You know familiarity. Ah, my, my, come, 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 come quickly. Let me baptize you. <laughs> yeah, say, ah. Uh, He had discernment. Discernment comes with age, comes with development. You see, when, when we are struggling with discerning ourselves as brethren, it shows we have not grown. We still see carnally. We know ourselves after the flesh. 